this this uh, next piece is the last from the show. It is a strange one. This one's called On the High Horse Like This. I listened to a hunter from Africa say, all life is sacred. And he said that after separating a small, thin, non-venomous snake from around a large African hawk-like bird's neck. Because, you see, the bird attacks snakes. But that snake couldn't eat the large bird once it died. That would have been a senseless death. All oh, life is sacred, you say. So I couldn't help but think, as a hunter, do you pray for the sacred dead after you've killed it? I mean, I don't usually vocalize when I'm on a high horse like this. And I've had to explain myself to meat eaters. No, these aren't leather shoes I wear. I I'm a vegetarian, though I still have to feign a smile and to commiserate with the men eating slaughtered animals. Because, you see, I'd look like a fool for having different beliefs. People don't want to hear about a moral choice different from their own. I mean, we're Americans. If it's not human, or maybe a dog, or a cat, eat it. It's that simple. But, but I married a hunter, a, a marine who served our country, and he told me that every time he killed an animal, a part of him felt a regretful twinge of pain when he killed his prey. The prey that he searched for with the weapon he could use on anything before it got close enough to be an enemy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting on my high horse again. It's convenient that people can get their kill from the grocery store without getting any blood on their hands. Anything to stop everyone from thinking about what they're doing. Because I've heard that killing something makes you feel something. And I thought, 